Hello, my name is Suas Huilam. I'm the quality manager here at Zimmer and Peacock. Today, we will talk about a rather intimidating topic. It is regulatory and quality. Some of you might think that this is a bit of a, a difficult topic and it will require more time, effort and money from you to comply with uh, the regulation of medical devices. However, I think that you can be smart and have a smart system in place that will help you get to your goal quicker and more efficient and get even better products. So how can we do that? That's what we'll talk about in this video. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. First, let's talk about the famous uh, fourth triangle for a project where you see the relationship between quality, cost and time. So you want to stay in the utopia area where you have the highest quality of a product in the shortest amount of time and with the lower uh, cost possible. So how can we stay in this utopia? I suggest that you start with having a quality management system in place early on in the project as early as possible, which will help you get into the market much quicker. So I suggest that you start with a quality management system from scratch, where it follows you through your R&D process, all your development stages until you have a final product that's ready to be put in the market. When you do that, then you will have all the documentation required by the regulations and the authorities to get your device approved in the EU or in the USA quite easy and quite straightforward and without too much time. So uh, let's just start with having an idea. What do you need to get into the market? For example, in the EU, to place a new medical devices on the market, you will need to comply with an MDR if it's a medical device or an IVDR for in vitro diagnostic device. So those regulations you really need to comply with to be able to sell your product in the market in the EU. For the US, you have 21 CFR Part 820 for the FDA approval of your medical devices. Okay, all those regulations always require that you have a quality management system and we call it QMS in place to be able to manage your product. What is a quality management system? A quality management system is in general um, an overall system of how your organization or your company is actually working. Uh, for medical devices, there is an international standard called ISO 13485 that's specifically built for medical device manufacturers and developers and distributors that will um, that are an adaptation of uh, the MDR and IVDR and the, I, and the FDA regulations. So it will help you become in compliance quicker. Okay. Now we will dive a little bit deeper into ISO 13485. What does it mean? How do you put it in place? And later on, maybe in the next video, we can talk more about the actual regulations of MDR and VDR uh, so that you have more information about that. So quality management system, according to ISO 13485, consists of some documents that describe your company in general or your organization. For example, you need something called a quality policy. And a quality policy is just one piece of paper describing what is your view of quality in your organization. Like for example, you value uh, quality and precision and accuracy. You promise your customers uh, high quality, high performance products. Uh, something general that top management need to sit down and discuss and define. That's simple to do. Something else is a quality manual and within the quality manual, you describe your different processes in your organization. For example, your company is only working in production. So you will define all the process in relation to this production. For example, how do you do procurement? How do you um, handle your customer orders? How do you handle complaints from your customers? So you need to define what actually you are doing and put it in the quality manual. It's like a summary of your, your company. And then you need to have an organization chart, which is something quite easy. Uh, if you are a small company, a startup, then you, like everyone is wearing multiple hats, doing different things. So you just define, okay, I have this person and this person, this person, and th those are their assigned roles. Uh, it can be even flexible and it can be um, um, less rigid. You also need quality goals. 
that you define for yourself and your company each year. And then you follow up, did you actually meet those quality goals or not? For example, you want to improve uh, the rate of uh, the yield of your uh, of your products. You want to reduce the number of complaints that you are having from one year to the other. Those are your quality goals that you need to define every year. And then we move a little bit uh, into the second level, which are the different processes and the details of how you uh, do those processes. Uh, one of the things that you need to have in place is a document and record control process, which means that every document that you produce during your production, during your design and development, during your day-to-day -day activities, every document needs to be well-maintained, well-controlled. If you do changes, those changes are tracked and those records are uh, stored in a proper place. You, it's easy to find. You need to identify it properly. So you have a document IDs. Um, how you do this? ISO doesn't tell you how to do this, but it tells you that you need to have it. You have to have it in order to be uh, compliant with ISO 13485. Okay, so this is document and record control. Also, of course, the uh, uh, retention uh, period. How long do you have to keep some records and some document? And this is also um, related to some authorities' uh, requirements and some laws that you have to keep some documents, like, for example, chemicals um, uh, handling or um, uh, records of how you have been, your employees were exposed to different chemicals. Those need to be uh, maintained for 50 years or something like that. So you need to have a process around it. Second thing is how do you do design and development? Uh, if you are doing design and development for a new medical device, then you need to define your process. How do you do it? How do you assign the team? Do you have a product development plan where you say, okay, for this product, for example, I am going to develop this product over the course of 18 months. Within those 18 months, you need to define milestones where you stop and you look back and you see, okay, how good is my product now? How good is my prototype now? Uh, did I reach all my different uh, uh, goals within this milestone or not? So this is a product development plan and we can dive deeper, but now for the time, we just keep it simple. You need also to define specifications for your products that you are developing. You need to consider user needs and stakeholder requirements and then link it into a specification uh, list that your team will work against and make sure that you reach those specifications. Of course, for medical device, something very important is risk analysis. So you need to see how your product will be handled in the market and what risk can arise from handling your product. So a risk analysis activity is very, very wide, very important, a place where all auditors will audit you on. So uh, we can dive deeper into that, but not today. Risk analysis is something that you need to, to consider. Design reviews where you need to, as I told you, sit down with your team and see where you are. Um, the different milestones that you have to meet during your project will require um, following uh, certain steps, uh, you define, you specify, you implement, and then you verify and validate. Verification and validation is a very important step in medical devices where you need to freeze your design and then do a verification, uh, a set of verification tests and the validation by clinical studies. And then you can say, okay, my device is now ready for design transfer and scaling up. All of those parts are parts of technical files that you need for uh, regulatory compliance. Moving on to a different process, for example, competence and training. Competence and training is important for you to define how do you train your um, team? How do you make sure that they have enough competence to do the role that they are assigned to do? And this is also required by ISO. So you need to sit down and define what type of training are you giving them? What type of competence do you have for each role? So you have something called a role description and then you have a training program and you have records that the training actually happened. Moving on to production. So you need, if you're going to do a production for your medical device in the future, you need to define how are you doing this production? 
So you need to have part numbering system. You need to have a kind of a, a revision control of your different uh, parts. Uh, when you actually perform uh, production for a batch, you need to have travel forms. You need to have traceability between the raw materials that you use to produce this batch up until you actually deliver this batch to a customer. So this whole traceability thing is a main um, main process in medical device uh, development and in production where MDR and IVDR will require you to trace back each single product you put on the market to its raw material and how did you produce it. So travel forms, work instructions, incoming inspection, inspection reports, outgoing quality control reports, labeling, proper labeling of the device is really, really important and it's also uh, controlled by MDR and IVDR. Also, of course, maintaining your stock making sure that uh, expiry dates uh, of chemicals, if you're using chemicals or other materials that have expiry dates, and those are all parts of your production process and you need to document how you're doing this. Um, another part is change control. So change control is really, really important because this is how you make sure that any change you do doesn't introduce any new risks or it doesn't affect a previous risk. So. Um, a product, a medical device is related together. So if you do any change to a small part that maybe you consider it as a small change, we don't care about it, it's something simple. But when you sit down and do a risk analysis around this change, you might consider uh, other aspects. It might affect maybe how you handle your data. It might affect how the results is at the end. It might affect um, um, your supplier, your supply chain. Uh, so any change, con any change to uh, a current design need to be um, uh, properly handled. So you have a change control process that you need to document. Another thing is purchasing. How do you how do you uh, purchase your your raw materials? How do you um, evaluate your suppliers? Those, those suppliers need to be approved, and it has to be a process. How do you um, uh, how do you say that okay, this supplier is adequate for me to order those materials from? So uh, that's another process that you need to define and write it down. Um, uh, finally, you have the complaints, uh, handling, non-conformity handling, CAPA handling, feedback from the field. All those different processes need also to be documented. So this was a brief description of ISO 13485. And please remember that quality is never an accident. It is always a result of intelligent effort. Uh, thank you so much and if you want to support us please subscribe to our channel and if you want to know more about Zimmer and Peacock visit our website. Thank you.